this problem, we want to find the area um, between the two curves. So if I um, consider it vertically, it's going to be quite difficult, right? Because, um, for example, at this point, the upper and lower boundary um, is the same curve, the pink one. Um, at this point over here, the upper boundary is a pink curve and the lower boundary is a blue curve. And at this point um, over here, the upper and the lower boundaries are both the blue curve. So I would have to break it up into multiple integrals and um, would not I would not have a good time doing that. So what we're going to consider then is the area, but we're going to construct um, the area using rectangles, you know, if we would do like a Riemann sum here, um, using horizontal rectangles. Because if I take these horizontal rectangles, very clearly we do have that the upper bound is a pink curve and the lower bound is the blue curve. And that is true for all points um, within this area between them. So we do have that the height of our rectangle is the pink curve minus the blue curve, and then the width here, because um, to make an area we do need width times height, and the width is just dy, which is taking my y-axis and cutting up a little piece of it dy. So we are going to integrate it with respect to y. Uh, so to integrate it, we do need to first know our boundaries, right? Um, and our boundaries, they do give us that. They do give us the point negative 3 on the x-axis um, and 3 on the y-axis. And they do, we do have this point here, which is 0, 0. Um, normally, I don't like to take it for granted. I like to check. Um, but because this will be a longer example, let's just assume that it is 0, 0. So we are integrating with respect um, to y so that we can consistently have the same curve as the upper boundary and the same curve as the lower boundary. So this means that when I do set up my integral, we will have dy, right? Um, this means that both are curves. They do need to be expressed as a function of y and not as a function of x. Thankfully, they do give us um, this which both are functions of y, right? y is given as the, um, as the independent variable and x is as the dependent. So, okay, we're ready to set it up. So um, the lower boundary is the point zero, which is zero on the y-axis, and the upper boundary is the point three. Um, you might be inclined to put negative three, but remember that we're doing it on the y-axis and not the x-axis. So to do this, we do have to put the upper curve minus the lower curve, right? Because I just want the area between them. If I were to just put the upper curve, um, which is the, the pink area, I would do all of this area over here, right? Because all of this is beneath the, the pink curve. However, I don't want all of this. I just want that intersection. So to get purely the intersection, I do have to remove all of this other area over here. And this other area is the area beneath the blue curve, right? So if I remove all of this, all I'm left with is the intersection that I want, right? This one over here. Um, so to do this, we do need to put the upper curve minus the lower curve. Um, and so the upper curve is the pink one given by the curve um, 2y, minus y squared and then we're going to subtract the lower curve which is um which is the curve y squared y squared minus 4y and all of this times a dy it's very important to conceptualize that this dy is just you know not there cosmetically if you will it is um it is a fundamental part of the area. As we said with the rectangles, you cannot have an area if you were not multiplying it by a base, right? Um, so now all we have to do is we have to simplify our integral, clean it up a little bit, and then we can integrate it. Um, 
So we do have over here the integral from 0 to 3 of 2y minus y squared, and then we apply this minus y squared, and then minus and minus gives us plus 4y dy, which is really equal to the integral from 0 to 3 of um, 2y plus 4y gives us 6y, right? And then minus y squared minus y squared gives us minus 2y squared dy. Um, so now I'm just going to take the integral by applying the reverse power rule. And we have here 6y squared over 2 minus 2y cubed um, divided by 3. And all of this evaluated from 0 to 3. Um, so now we just apply our boundaries, right? So this is um, 6 divided by 2 is 3 times um, 3 squared minus 2 thirds times 3 cubed. Um, and then this is minus, that is just minus 0 plus 0 when we apply these boundaries, right? Um, so here 3 times 3 squared, that will give us 27 minus... 2 times um, 27 divided by 3, which is just 2 times 9, which is 18. Um, and so when we do this, we get 9, which is our total area uh, between the two curves, right? So this is quite straightforward once you set up the integral. Um, I think that the biggest problem here really is interpreting this idea of integrating with respect to y. Um, sometimes folks get confused when they try to think uh, which is the upper and which is the lower function. Um, the way that I like to do it is just I kind of mentally, mentally rotate this picture um, 90 degrees this way, right? C counterclockwise. So when we rotate it, we can kind of see that, you know, we, we have this parallel between the x-axis and we can see that, you know, in this, in this part, in these quadrants, we have um, positive and in these two quadrants, we have negative. So try to like mentally rotate it and make this analogy between the x-axis when you're trying to think of which is the upper function and the lower function.